Is there anything else that we feel as to why Malaysians have you know, achieved this overweight reputation or why the increase in a lot of even diabetes, which is crazily increasing every year, mm -hmm. and other chronic illnesses and diseases is happening in Malaysia. Even eczema is you know, worsening every year. Mm -hmm. What else do we think are some of the problems that, as to why Malaysians have these health risks? Right, so um, if we had to look at other factors, things like um, the rampant usage of antibiotics, which is still very prevalent in Asia. So parents will come in, uh, or they might themselves come in, and if they're sick, they're not happy if you don't give them an antibiotic because they believe that that's the fastest way to recover. Um, so what we, what we would advise uh, when you take antibiotics, what happens is uh, you um, destroy a lot of the good bacteria that's in your gut. And we know that the immune system lies in the gut. 80% of the immune system is within the gut. So if you destroy the antibiotics that are within the, I mean, the, the good bacteria that are within the gut, you mess up with the immune system. Also, what happens is every time you take antibiotics and you wipe out the good bacteria, there is a high chance that you overgrow fungus. Okay, so fungus is already within our gut. But when you wipe out the good bacteria, there's no check mechanism, and so the fungus pro proliferates, and that causes a lot of things like eczema. And the other thing that I see commonly is food sensitivities. So not full-blown food allergies, for example, I'm not talking peanut allergy where you swell up right after eating. I'm talking about things that you eat today that don't show that you're reacting to them until three days later. Mm. So you might feel fatigued, you might have a brain fog, or you might have a bit of bloating that you never realized was linked to the pasta that you had three days ago mm. or the pizza. Yeah. But when you do a food allergy test and you see that, oh, wow, this is all the foods that you are reacting to, then this, this can explain some of the symptoms of being unhealthy and overweight as yeah. well. So that nicely leads up to my next question, which is what are some of the health complications that Malaysians or Asians are unknowingly leading themselves to by keeping up this type of diet and lifestyle? Should they be worried? So some of the complications we're looking at are directly linked to obesity. So things like diabetes um, and uh, hypertension, very common here. But what we're seeing increasingly more of is also depression, and they're coming at younger and younger mm. ages. Uh, things like asthma, eczema, uh, cancer. Everybody knows someone cancer, with cancer. Yes, and, you yeah. know, it's, it's, not, yeah. it's, it's not uncommon anymore. And all this is linked also to insulin. So if we... Uh, at, at risk uh, for diabetes, you want to measure your insulin levels, which is not commonly done. So a lot of us are walking around pre-diabetes. We are five or ten years right. behind mm. diabetes. Measure yeah. your insulin levels. And if that is high, and don't follow the lab range, go three to five, that's the, the level that you want to be at, between three to five. And if you're above that, then you're pre-diabetic. And pre-diabetes is super easy to reverse. Okay, if you just follow the foods the way we've been speaking about, cutting out you know, the sugary products and having more fat and protein, you can reverse prediabetes. Mm. So if you reverse prediabetes, you automatically reverse the chances of you, or reduce the chances of you having the other diseases that we spoke about. Yeah. No, I think that's good for a lot of people out there to know because whatever may seem mild mm. today, don't be deceived because it's just a build up to much worse health issues that you're basically opening up for you and your families without making a change, right? Yeah. 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 So, I think what's very important for a lot of the viewers is what's next? What can they do that's manageable and feasible for a lot of people? I think you know, a lot of the, the reasons why they're not making a change is they don't have time. They, maybe some, a part, big part of it is lacking knowledge, but affordability, picking healthier options is more expensive and so on. So, what could we share with them? I'd love to answer that. Yeah, great. Okay, well, the important thing to understand is that if you listen to the advice from Singularity University, mm. we are now adding, as of 2015, we're adding three months to the average human lifespan for every year you live between 2015 and 2030. Okay. Now, by the time we get to 2030, we'll be adding a year to every year you live because of advances in medical technology. Mm -hmm. So if you do the math, if you are 40 years old today, you will live to be close to 105. However, here's the crazy thing. <laughs> while we can live, while many of us in our 40s are gonna live into uh, our 100th birthday, it doesn't mean that we're gonna live, get there healthy. Uh, okay. Some of us might get there barely alive, bedridden, mm. like uh, unable to move. So the aim should be 
longevity and preserving your health as long as you can. Right. Right? Of course. And that's easier than a lot of people think. There's a four, mod a, a four phase model I okay, look at. Okay, great. Yeah. Now, the first one is sleep. Most mm -hmm. people underestimate the amount of sleep they need. Sleep yeah. actually is one of the, the, yeah. the key parts of weight loss. Definitely. If you are not getting enough sleep, you end up putting on more weight. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, now the second thing after sleep is food. You gotta get educated on food. Mm -hmm. And um, you gotta stop. You gotta be very careful about the advertising you see on television. You, m I, I recommend Mark Hyman's book, Food: mm -hmm. What the Heck Should We Eat? That's a great book. Mm -hmm. um, you, you also might want to read uh, the book, Eat, Move, Sleep, okay. uh, which is another great book on on nutrition. Now the third thing is exercise. Most people do not exercise right. If you look at 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 doctors like Doug McGuff, who wrote the book Body by Science, mm -hmm. he says jogging is not exercise. Jogging creates a short-term endurance lift, but over time, it can cause um, uh, injuries with your, with, with your bones, um, difficulty walking in older age. Mm -hmm. The best form of exercise with the highest correlation with longevity is strength training. Now, the fourth thing is yeah. understanding that you can hack your senses. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people uh, accept the fact that they're going to lose their sense of hearing, they're going to lose their eyesight, they're going to see uh, brain deterioration as they get older. Right. Not true. So for example, I used to wear glasses 40% of the time. I um, hired a vision coach. Mm -hmm. They're becoming more popular right now. In two weeks, I improved my eyesight from 2040 to 2025, which means I now need glasses two to three percent of the time, mm. from 40 percent to two to three percent. But it's more than that. By being able to hack my eyesight, I've started to understand that I can hack other aspects of my life that we traditionally believe deteriorate with age. So now I'm obsessed with becoming in the best shape I've ever been. And today, even though I'm, even though I'm 42 or 43, I, I stopped counting some years ago, um, <laughs> I'm healthier now than I was when I was 25, uh, yeah, yeah. right? Because you, but all of um, us can get there. Right. It's just yeah. about, it's just about educating yeah. yourself. Yeah. So let's, I think those are really great points and that actually takes a more holistic viewpoint, which is great. But diet-wise, if we drill down, what can they actually do today in the changes in their diet? What would both of you say? Well, the, the number one thing I see that patients don't do enough mm. of is eating vegetables. Okay. They do not eat the required five to seven servings. Most people do anywhere between two to three servings a day. So you can start by just upping the vegetable intake and that starts with veggies even at breakfast because otherwise you're going to have dinner and you'll have all these veggies to eat just to meet the requirement so wherever possible just have whatever you're doing now whatever that amount is just double it and mm -hmm. that's that's easy you can do that oh yeah, that's very easy yeah, so diet-wise, that would be it. Okay. Number two for diet is just cutting out all the sugary drinks that mm -hmm. you have with your meal. So no tea. Just have water? Just have water. I really must have a, f a juice, a carrot juice. or. Water. Tea, tea is okay if you don't yeah. add sugar to it. Yeah. Then the other thing that I commonly see in practice is that uh, patients just eat way too much fruits as their snacks or as a meal replacement. They, they don't eat fruits. Yeah. Although I'm a big advocate of fruits, I would still say um, caution them to have mm. less than half cup to or less than a cup of fruits a day. Yeah. Just simply because fruits are filled with fructose and we're trying to reduce the amount of sugar. Mm. Because when they're in my practice, and, and most Malaysians I see do have some sort of inflammation going on, and that's at the root cause of a lot of illnesses. So you do want to cut out sugar mm. and especially fructose because that's very inflammatory. Yeah. Um, so reducing the amount of fruits that you have um, mm -hmm. That would be something else I would advise. Yeah. Okay. So Dr. Sumi, what would you tell these moms at home who are trying to juggle everything, they don't have time, and they have all these kids, yeah. and they said, okay, this has been really enlightening. Mm -hmm. I want to make a change. What do I do tomorrow? Right. So yeah. I just, I just came off an appointment before coming here with a mom of two who had no time to wash her hair. Mm -hmm. And she's asking me, what can I do? And I'm saying exactly the same thing. You know, uh, Firstly, I'm saying, enjoy your newborn baby with you and forget about the weight loss for now. But these are the steps that you can take. Start eating more veggies, start, start, being, start having more healthy fats, cut out the processed foods. So, you know, we have a lot of cookies that are, you know, lactational cookies or cookies How would they know what is processed food? So, yeah. we spoke about processed foods, if it comes in a box, if it has a lot of ingredients in it, if it has a lot of sugar, so if the number one, two, three, four ingredient is sugar and all forms of sugar. So, now they're very clever. They break up the sugar into different uh, terms or different uh, wow forms of it. So some of it might be glucose, some of it might be fructose, some of it might be syrup. They're all just different forms of sugar and they come on different, if there are 10 ingredients, 
Number two might be one form of sugar. Number four, a different form. So yeah. people are not really aware that these are all just actually different forms of sugar. Yeah, like when you see when you see barley malt extract, mm. that's sugar. Mm. Maltodextrin, that that's sugar. Yeah. These yeah. are just there are around fifty different names for sugar. Mm. So I think you know we've covered so much today. I think it's been very educational and inspirational. I feel to a lot of um, our viewers on what changes they can make today. But do you have any closing thoughts that you want to share out? Well, I just think that being healthy isn't very difficult. If you have the right knowledge and if you invest and prioritize your time on the right things, you can do it. It's not as difficult as hopefully, hopefully, you know, we didn't come off as being too technical or too difficult mm -hmm. because it is very doable to change the way your health is uh, by implementing consistently small changes. If you don't have time to do anything in 90 days, then don't do it in 90 days. But make sure you do something small every single day that contributes to your long-term health. Mm -hmm. And then it's very doable. Mm -hmm. sure? I have many friends in Malaysia who are obsessed about their cars, right? They save up so that they can buy the mm -hmm. BMW or the Mercedes that they've always dreamed of. Now, why do they do this? Because they want to feel good in their 30 to 40 minute commute to work back mm -hmm. and forth every day. But then we forget that our vehicle, which is our body, is what we're in 24 hours right. a day. And people completely neglect this. The mm -hmm. same friends of mine who are spending all of this money on their fancy cars, they don't take care of their they health. They neglect their inner health. And I think this is the fundamental flaw in our society. We crave what marketing tells us to crave, the fancy car, mm -hmm. right? But when you start to realize that this, you're blessed with a body, and that your body being in its peak state, should be one of the key goals, the key things you mm -hmm. pursue every day. Yeah. The way you live life is different. B many people think, oh, it takes a lot of time to, to exercise, to, to, mm -hmm. to eat healthy. That's rubbish. When you do that, you have so much more energy. You are, you are thinking so much clearer that you actually are able to go to work and deliver more and do more and create better results. I sleep seven to eight hours a day. Mm -hmm. I work out like crazy. I only eat healthy. And I'm able to know, do three to four times what I could do before, back when I was my unhealthy self. All of these things don't take away time. They give you time. And seriously, if you're gonna put money in a fancy car, forget it. Put money in your health, in your nutrition, in your education, so you can take your human vehicle and make it that Mercedes Benz that you so want. No, I think that's a very good point. I think we're too focused on the external layers of our lives, but we forget to take care of what's really important that's yeah. our inner health. Mm -hmm. So thank you both, Vision and Dr. Sumi, for having a very interesting chat. And I, I honestly feel that it will be eye-opening to a lot of our viewers out there. And this is just the beginning, of course. I think this will help spur up more conversations for all of you viewers. Please do share this out. Spread the awareness, because I think together is when we can really start seeing changes. And like you said, doing it alone is when you can't see anything sustained. You can't do it on your own. You feel more empowered when you do it together. So I think if we can kind of influence this movement and get people out there to, to get that word out, spread the education and do this together, then we'll start seeing a healthier nation, right. right? So thank you all again for joining us. If you have any questions or comments, please don't uh, hesitate to reach out to us and start making those changes today. And I hope to see you soon. Bye. Thanks, guys.